Hi everyone, the Ask Mike Show, we are back again and today we have Sherry Nelson joining me. Sherry, thanks for coming on. Thank you. No, I'm happy to be here, Michael. I've been listening to your show, it's wonderful. <laughs> thanks very much. So you're a, a co-host of Movie Reviews and More, which if I'm not mistaken, that's a, a podcast as well. And you, well, I'm sure the, the title says it all right to review movies is that is that about how the the show works um i believe that that was essentially the base when uh, the co when the founder brian sebastian created it uh but now it's uh, it's a pretty well-rounded show similar to yours we talk to people uh, personal interest stories um like we do the fun things with some really great people with um, musicians and things like that um when i first started we were able to bring on um, people wanting to do health and fitness and with the COVID it was great because you know people call it the COVID weight gain and so we were fortunate to have you know the great Elaine Goodlad who's also Canadian discuss you know how to get started again like what to eat how to begin a, a workout regimen you know that's doable without perhaps a gym because they were still close so we do that we've had um, poets on um, we've had other authors on producers um, we've had people with um, the Ergo air fryer, which is great. So, yeah, we do a little bit of everything. So if anybody's doing research and wanting to um, get some information on something, give our show a, a Google, and you might hopefully, you know, learn something. I hope so. That's my aim at the end of each show. Yeah, it's, it's always nice to, to take something away from a show. It's not just there just for escapism, which is... It's helpful as well to have that, you know, a show that's just entertainment based. But um, for those of us that are in sort of the realm of wanting to improve ourselves in some way, it's always nice to have something taken away. But you, you didn't always start that way, did you? I mean, I've heard a bit of a rumor that you were in the, the lumber world being from Canada. So, so talk us through what that was like. Yeah, I was... Um fourth generation in the lumber industry in British Columbia, Canada. Uh, my great grandfather came over from Sweden and uh, he and a partner had created the sawmill in 1927. And they, my family took over uh, solely in 1945. And uh, my family just sold it in April, 2019. I did all the sales for the company um, where we're located in British Columbia is about 40 miles north of the Montana border. So um, I was fortunate to uh, be able to sell our lumber into the United States. And so I made a lot of great connections down there. And uh, so, yeah, no, it was a wonderful um, experience. And, and then, yeah, so this is kind of a lottery win for me um, doing Brian Sebastian's movie reviews and more. It's, it's just, it's, it's really, a great thing <laughs> yeah yeah i'm sure i mean what what was it like selling lumber in in canada then i imagine i imagine it being a popular thing but well I, I, um lumber is the essence of um the health of an economy um like if you're in a rural area or something like that and you see the trains commuting you know in canada the cn the canadian national the canadian pacific rail line the united states you've got the up you know, the, the BNSF, if you see a lot of lumber on rail, um, that's a sign of a healthy economy, you know, or um, a lot of on, you know, truckloads of lumber. It's the baseline of um, economy. So it, it was, it, it was really, um, I enjoyed it because, you know, I was doing something productive. It was, you know, you know, when the market was great, it was always great, but there's not often that there's a high grooving market. There is one right now going on. Um, but I learned a lot. Uh, it was, I, I, I was thinking about this the other day. It, I think, prepared me for what I'm doing now. You know, like um, you'd get a completely different perspective when I would talk to lumber traders in Oregon, perhaps, versus if I spoke to anyone in Memphis or Chicago. So it, it was a really, um, it was a great way to network and connect and meet with people and uh, open your mind to different perspectives. So, yeah, I loved it. I, I really enjoyed it. Is there anything in particular you can t talk to us about that may be an interesting story from someone that you tried to sell lumber to? Um, is there anything that you, you can think of? Um, 
Well, our product, um, where we were located, it's an area in the Southeast Kootenai of British Columbia. So we're right on the Alberta border. And uh, we were blessed to have some of the most amazing timber, you know, in the Bull River region. And uh, no, the lumber sold for itself, but you know, it, it it's, um, well, here's a funny story. I remember our reload in uh, at the UP um, port in Eastport, Idaho, um, Eastport Industry, a lady named Slim. And uh, at the time, a large uh, sawmill had purchased a, a, our competitor in the region. And so anyways, they were coming to inspect her reload. <laughs> and uh, so she goes, I don't like it when people are going through my things, you know, like coming in their yard and watching. And so then she goes, you got a lot of orders on the book. So she said, I'm going to load up a bunch of your, your cars of lumber. I said, okay. So it turned out a lot of our lumber graders were actually in Idaho that weekend and they were at the, the pancake house IHOP and they cut and all of a sudden they could hear the train going by and they had uh, four cars of our lumber rail cars and then one car of that competitor and then four cars of our lumber. And we were just a fraction of the size of this large company, but the men there, they started peacocking and they were so proud that they could see all our wood on rolling like that. So so it was a fun story, um, but yeah, no, we were just like, just such a small family self-sustaining uh, sawmill compared to this one that, you know, had, you know, was one of the top big three. So that was a fun story. <laughs> what did it mean to to get the sales then? Because very often it can feel like the, the big businesses, it's not very emotional, I guess. What was it like for you to get those deals? Well, for me, I'm one of those people that likes to compete with herself. You know, like you have somewhat of a guide of where the lumber is going and, and you learn that by communicating, you know, the stats will only show you so much. So you're always, you know, communicating, talking to various um, traders and things like that. So, you know, when you find out your main competitor sold the same lumber, the same species, the same grade, but you got a better number, <laughs> you know? So, and, and like you said, it's personal because it's our family. It's not a large conglomerate. So I was always trying to get the highest number that I could get because I knew we had good quality. I knew the men worked hard. Um, I didn't want to wait, make it a waste of their day being at the mill, you know, and, and giving it away because anyone can give the lumber away. Cause I know people, you know, would be like, Oh, I could sell more wood than you. You probably could but can you get a good dollar for it? So it was one of those things. I always wanted to get the best dollar I could. And uh, I remember one time, one of the large competitors, salesperson had come to the office and uh, they asked my father if they could look at my sales book. And I said, no way. And I said, why do they want to look at it? And he says, well, they want to know how you're getting the number you are. So um, <laughs> it didn't happen very often, but you know, it was, it's one of those jobs that I loved. I really loved it because you never turned it off at five o'clock. You know, you're always looking at other factors to try and get ahead of the market. You know, um, you know, anything like an election even can impact a lumber market. So I, I really enjoyed it. it. It was wonderful. Are there any, because I, I'm aware that you, you may not be able to share this, but I'll ask anyway. Are there any sort of things that you did to try to negotiate the higher prices or did it just come down to the person that you were in front of just be prepared to, to pay more for it? We had good quality, you know, like we, we didn't pull a lot of grades out of our wood. So we did have good quality. Um, I didn't have a lot of volume. Um, you know, but sometimes, you know, you just adult, adjust tallies. If you had to go lesser on a falling market, which you always had to get ahead of, you couldn't go behind a falling market, you know, like on an up market, you know, you want, you didn't want to get ahead of that. So, um, no, um, the quality spoke for itself, you know, sometimes it was frustrating, you know, you'd get called names sometimes, but you know, I, I was for, I believed in the product, you know, like I'm that girl, whether it's the lumber, it's a friend. Um, you can see behind me, I've got some of our guests we've had on the show. I've got their books with me. And if I believe in something, I'm committed, I'm determined to, you know, to do the best that I can for them. Um, so yeah, no, it was just coming down to that. I didn't pick favorites because, you know, in any industry that it's a small world, everybody will hear everything. What was it like having a family business? Did it affect the, the family dynamic at all? Was it easier for you to split family and, and business and all those things as well? Talk, talk us through what that was like. Well, 
Um, I'm that girl that my father, he's, he's my hero. Most, you know, daughters feel that way. And my whole life and, you know, for the rest of my life, I've always um, wanted to make my father proud of me. And, um, you know, it was a pretty big deal that he took a chance on me to do sales in the company. Um, so I always wanted to, you know, do the best I could, you know, beat the previous quarter, beat the previous year, make records. So I really wanted to make him proud because, you know, it is nepotism, you know, so I really had to prove myself. Um, I didn't have to prove myself as a woman. I'm not that girl. I had to prove myself because my father hired his daughter. So I really wanted to make the men at work realize that it wasn't a waste. I wanted to prove to them that I appreciated their ethic, their work, their, their, you know, the, the time taken away from their family to come to work. I really wanted them to know, you know, it, we have a great product and we really did. And, um, so but my dad also taught me, you know, to turn it off, you know, like we lived an hour away from town. It's one hour to get to town. So every Saturday, even though I worked with him, I learned from him every day. And uh, we would go to um, town to get groceries together. We never, ever talked about business. So I learned from him to turn it off. So it was great. You know, like we would always talk about the stock market, you know, current events and things. And then when we got back to the office we never talked about outside things it was always business but yeah he's someone I always learned from he, he was a good honest he's a decent man and uh, this COVID worries me because you know he sold it he was the general manager you know people were always coming to him for advice and to help seek solutions you know and and he is that generation that watches the news all the time so um, he you know he's isolated himself so it's a double whammy where He's completely isolated, and I do worry about my father. I worry about any senior citizen that has been totally isolated, you know, um, and I just wish that there's something we could do aside from driving by and waving in a car or, you know, making a phone call. I really, really want this to come to a positive conclusion so that, you know, we can spend more time with the greatest generation we have. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I completely agree. I think despite everyone handling the virus as best they can. Um, it's not the same for everybody. You know, everyone's got their own, uh, their own things that they're worrying about. You know, it's not all like sunshine and rainbows for, for some people. You know, they've got very serious health concerns that the virus will make worse. Even if they recover, they may never really regain their previous health afterwards so it's definitely something that I guess we need more of we need more empathy for people that are having a harder time than than others you know but um yeah well I know that you were close to your grandmother and I think you and I are parallel you know you always wanted to make her proud you know you you wanted to succeed to you, you know to gift her to you know show her you love her and I feel the same way and you know like um you just hate them being alone because like I said, they're our greatest source of information. They've seen and experienced so many things. So when this is over, I highly recommend anybody, please go visit the senior citizens homes or, you know, any students wanting to do a history project. They are your best history book, you know, so it, it yeah, they're a value. They're a complete asset to the society. And then that is my greatest concern is, is there the impact of this on them? So once you decided to move on from the, the lumber business, what, what went through your mind? What questions did you ask? What conversations did you have to have before you, you made the next move? Um, well, I'm, funny enough, I am private. So I knew I loved lumber. I really do. I enjoy it. You know, um, I love the trading of it. You know, it's very exciting. It's an adrenaline. Um, so I knew I wanted to pursue that. So for the first year, I continually tried to pursue um, a career, further career in lumber in the United States. And I know a lot of my Canadian friends, they said, oh, that's, that's impossible. You know, you don't have a work visa. But I know that I wanted to do it legally with a work visa. And so, you know, I was in the States. I was in Canada trying to get access to Canadian products so that I could trade it. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of sawmills, you know, they thought, oh, I'd love to do it, but it's hard to do. And then um, by fluke, um, 
I entered this contest. I never would have entered um, a, a cover girl contest if I was working at Gal um, our family's business um, or as a trader, but I wasn't working and I thought, well, no one's going to know because I'll be in and out and at least it's, it's a risk. And I thought, well, I'll try it, but I won't make it past the first week. And so, so yeah, so, <laughs> so I took this um, different path that I never thought would come my way. Just for people that, that have no idea, what was the, the name of the contest? Um, it was a Maxim Magazine cover girl contest, and it was their international contest. So um, I, I submitted my photo. A uh, photographer had seen my Facebook profile photo, and uh, he suggested that I enter the contest. So I did, and um, it's, a, it's a contest by vote, and people, you know, just seem to, I guess, like me. A lot of my you know, they have a questionnaire and, and things like that. So going forward, if anybody enters a contest, they, I guess, I didn't know how to answer the questions properly because I looked at my answers and I looked at everyone else's answers and I thought, I have no idea what I'm doing. But, you know, there was a $25,000 U.S. fund uh, reward, you know, if you won. And so I said, they said, what would you do with it? And I said, I donate everything. I would donate it to the animal shelter and I would donate it back to, you know, Wounded Warrior and the Garrison East Foundation. Well, um, it, you know, you could see who voted and, and the men liked my photo, but the women liked my answers. So, you know, um, it, that's, I think, why I was able to go ahead. You know, it was the, the vote of the women. Because <laughs> I, I remember this one lady, she always said, I voted for you again because you're not going to go to the beach on a photo shoot with the prize money. So, <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So what did they have you doing? What were the sort of pictures they had you taken? I mean, if it's, if it's a cover girl thing, I mean, I imagine there are certain photos that would work well on a cover and then photos that wouldn't. So what sort of things did they have you doing? Um, well, they just asked you to submit photos. So um, they, and that was it. And uh, submit photos and do a questionnaire. So at the time I was still pursuing lumber. So I thought I can't be naked on a beach. I can't wear a bikini. I can't do that because I still want to be taken seriously. You know, cause when I did do lumber, nobody saw me. Everything was on the phone or email. And uh, so I thought, you know, and near the end when I was getting higher and higher um, as the weeks got, I was at a few sawmills and, and I'd walk in the door and I'm like, oh, I hope they don't know I'm in the contest. You know what I mean? Because I thought, oh, they'll show me the exit right away. So, no, Maxim is wonderful. They uh, asked you to submit your photos of your choice. You know, they never told you to answer a certain way. Um, so, you know, it was wide open and it was all for a really great cause. The um, Wounded Warrior Project by Jared Allen. So, and it's a great magazine, Maxim. You know, it, I don't know if you've seen it, Michael. Uh, they've got exotic cars, they, they, exotic cigars, exotic drinks, travel. You know, the women are beautiful. So, you know, it, it's not a lowbrow magazine. It's wonderful. So, you know, I don't mind, like, I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be attached to their name. You know, I hope they are with me, but... <laughs> So, yeah, no, it, it was just a casual contest that, that developed into something more for me. So, as I say all the time, I've won the lottery. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, <clears throat> it must be, must be a bit surreal anyway, at least at the time, to sort of put yourself forward. I mean, did you think that you would go anywhere with it? Did you put yourself forward and then sort of go, well, that's not going to happen? Or was there a bit of a sense of, I am going to do it? Like, was there, a, was there an intention that you were going to try and go really far? Or did you sort of let it all go and just move on with it? No, I just, I entered it. And, and like, I always tell people, you know, because they, they say, why? And I said, why not? You know, I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> you know, I did not tell anybody I entered it. And uh, because I thought, well, what if I fail? I don't want anyone to know I'm a bomb. So, <laughs> so anyway, so I entered it and uh, I thought, well, you know what? I'll enter it. Now I'm not working. I got this tiny window that nobody will know and, uh, and I'll be out. And when I'm sitting on a porch when I'm 80, I'll be like, I entered a contest for Maxim, you know? <laughs> and then, like I said, as weeks went by, people were voting and sending me really nice comments. And, uh, 
a Ronnie James from uh, Global Galaxy Network saw my photo. He posted it. He said, vote for this girl. And uh, there's a man in Europe that I've never met, but he's really nice. And he's from Austria. And he was telling people to vote. So then some Europeans were voting for me. And uh, yeah, no, a lot of people were really, really nice to me. And you never hear that. You know, so you always hear about the negatives and uh, no, people were really actually quite nice. I never asked anyone to vote for me. I'm not that girl. I don't know if it's the Canadian in me or if it's the Nelson in me. I can't put my hand out to people um, because everyone, you know, they're busy. I don't want to bother people. So um, I never asked anyone to vote for me. And uh, but, but I'm happy that they did. What I really like about that story there is you changed why to why not so you had this sense of just do it like why not why why shouldn't you do it what's the what's the big deal anyway right it's only a it's only a contest you know if you lose so what you sort of move on that that's that's a very interesting way of approaching it because it almost seems like you brush it off either way whether it's a positive thing or a negative thing you've got this why not just do it almost attitude and what I thought was quite funny as well was you look back at 80 and go well I was I was on the cover of Maxim <laughs> almost like you had funny <laughs> way to tell like you, you almost like your grandkids or something <laughs> yeah no exactly well as long as you're not hurting anybody you know as long as you're not causing anyone pain or you know bothering people well maybe I bothered people but I just never want to hurt anyone's feelings I'm very conscious of that and uh, I think it, take the risk, do something, you know, you don't have to tell everyone you're doing it, you know, like if you're going to write a book, don't tell anyone or, you know, anything. And then, you know, if, if you succeed, it's excellent. If you don't, then maybe take a different avenue and try again. You know, you don't have to reveal your cards all the time, but as long as it's not hurting anyone, um, go for it. You know, there's nothing than a, like some people like to jump out an airplane. I don't, but that's my kind of adrenaline, you know, playing stocks or that's the one risk I took in um, the entertainment like that. So um, yeah, I'm happy that it went the way that it did. So after that then, did you have a, a sit down with yourself and decide what you were going to do next? Uh, no, because I kept thinking I'm still doing lumber. So, <laughs> and um then I reached out to Jimmy Starr because uh, everybody said, oh, if you, you know, just give it a chance. If you're not working, why don't you message Jimmy Starr? And so I sent him a note while well, I friended him. And then we talked briefly and he said, uh, what would you like to do? And I said, I want to get a work, work <laughs> I want to get a legal work visa and trade lumber in the United States. And he goes, OK. So he hung up. And then about 10 minutes later, because I was driving, he phones me, he goes, what is lumber? What is that? Most people want to be a movie star. Most people want their own TV show with lumber. And so then we talked, he goes, oh, he goes, that'd be a good TV show, you know, doing a show about lumber. And so then we got along and, and you know, Jimmy, he's infectious. He's this positive. Um, he's, he's the best. And uh, so then a couple of days later, he goes, what are you doing in 10 days? And I said, nothing. And he goes, do you want to go to an Oscar party? I said, of course. So he goes, okay fly down to LA, be here at this time. And the great Eileen Shapiro, she'll be staying at this hotel. And I said, okay. So I, I found her hotel and I booked at the same place. And, you know, I met a lot of, a, a lot of really great people. And, you know, it was, it was so fun. And, you know, us girls can relate. I got to wear a nice dress and <laughs> I got to get all fancy and, you know, it, it was so fun and, and, and wonderful. And I met some great people. And of course I met the great Trixie Gwynn and she's the one that led me to my um, job right now with Brian Sebastian on movie reviews and more. That sounds really cool. How you got the chance to, to go to the event. I so you had 10 days to <laughs> down to LA. Like what, what I imagine it being pretty hectic to get down there in, in, in 10 days. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because I, I, I really am introvert. I'm a cancer, you know, I like to go into my shell um, and I'm a planner, you know, I need to know what's doing next month. You know, I'm one of these category type people. And, uh, so then I thought, oh, goodness, I, I don't have an alarm clock because I'm not working. So I thought, well, okay, I'll do that. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, so 
um, it, it was really fun because, you know, every day I think, okay, this is going to be my last day, you know? So I got to do as much as I can, you know, because you, everyone knows entertainment is the most elite of all industries and 15 minutes of fame is true. So um, I just want to, you know, take every opportunity that I can and uh, do the best that I can. And again, not ever disrespect my father. And now I've got uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Starr and Eileen Shapiro's names attached to me and Brian Sebastian. And I just never, ever want to disrespect them. So I just really want to work hard, do good, be a positive impact and um, just go from there. And, and yeah, I, I am a hard worker and I just, you know, don't want to hurt anyone. I don't want to offend anyone. I just want to you know, I'm a happy girl. I, I like to, I'm happy when I wake up every day. I just want to, yeah, life is great. <laughs> so how do you see things in the future for you? I know with the, the way the world is right now, everything's very uncertain, but do you want to pursue anything in particular? Is there anything on your mind that makes you think it'd be good if I could do that? Yeah, there's a lot. Um, well, with this COVID and, you know, that, that Oscar party that I was at almost, you know, about a week after COVID happened and they shut the borders down and I've been in Canada ever since. So, you know, this is the once in a generation or once in a lifetime to get a second chance to make a first impression. <laughs> so when the borders open, I plan to go back down to the United States um, and, um you know, I've got things lined up to talk to U.S. immigration and, uh, you know, be working with Brian on his show. And I've been fortunate that I've been able to co-host on a few other shows. I, I like to bounce around like that. Um, I, I um, have an opportunity to do a movie um, if that goes through. And so there's nothing I don't want to try, you know, so um, within reason. <laughs> So uh, I I enjoy writing. You know, I have a couple screenplays that I've written that um, I hope to connect with the right people and, you know, make a, a, a good production of that. So I enjoy the writing of it. I'd like to, you know, do whatever anybody sees me fit for and, and do what I can. Like, yeah, so they're the professionals. They know what I would be good at and what I wouldn't be. So I'll just take their direction. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's... Um definitely worth considering like other people's opinions when when you want to try things anyway you know if you're someone that wants to go out there and i'll try everything then if they go oh well this would be great for you it's almost like they open the door for you to try it so you kind of sort of meet people in the middle quite a yeah. bit yeah yeah just as long i think with anything whether it's this whether it's um in retail you know, or in any industry, if, if anybody gives you the opportunity to work for them, just do your best and just, you know, you know, they took a risk on you. So you want to be the best that you can be and make a positive impact, you know, so, you know, just always be good and work hard, you know, show up on time and yeah, just do what you can. And like I said, it, you know, I, 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 I have people's names attached to me as I keep saying, and, and it's very, very important to me that I make them proud. I don't ever disrespect them and do the best that I can. So that's, that's always been my philosophy. Well, that is a fantastic way to end. I don't think I could put it any better than that. How can people learn more about yourself, Sherry? Because I know that you spend a bit of time on social media. So here's a chance to, to share those. Um, I'm on Facebook, Sherry Nelson. Uh, I spell it the traditional way, S-H-E-R-R-Y. Nelson and then I'm on Twitter and Instagram and my handle there is XOXO Sherry XO. I made that handle a long time ago. I didn't know <laughs> I didn't know I'd be saying it all the time. So anyway. <laughs> yeah, we've 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 all been there. I mean the amount of email addresses I've seen that were probably created when they were about twelve um and <laughs> they're just stuck with the same one is is quite high, I'm not gonna lie. Um, <laughs> Well, Sherry, thanks for being a guest. I really enjoyed having you on. And for those that are watching or listening, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of our past or future episodes. And I look forward to seeing you again on the next episode.